Emerging markets continue to remain subdued throughout 2018 as the currencies fall along with their markets. Some analysts believe that the bottom is in and it is now a great opportunity to purchase emerging markets. But since nothing has really changed fundamentally, is that a wise decision? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at emerging markets. I've got charts, I've got articles to show you today, and I want to begin by taking a look at this out of USA Today. Emerging markets have been under pressure in 2018 as a combination of rising U.S. interest rates and the threat of global trade barriers has caused a major reversal in interest in emerging market stocks. And we have seen that all throughout 2018. I've been showing you where they have gone. I'm going to give you some charts on that in just a second. With many emerging market nations having relied on borrowing in U.S. dollars, currency crises have hit two countries especially hard. And obviously, we know who they're talking about here. But this is important to know because you can have internal struggles, but you can also have external factors too. So that's some points that I wanted to make today, and we'll get into that further. But always remember, is this an issue internally in the country, or does it spill out, or is it really a factor from outside causing the problems within? Okay, I'll show you this chart right now. Currency and bond yield change year to date. So we need to think where it's gone in 2018, but also over the last, let's say, year, over the last two years, and so on. So if you look at the left-hand side, that's the country name. On the right-hand side, that's the currency value. And you can see Argentina, over 50% decrease right now. Brazil, 20%, Turkey, 40%, and so on. We could see that these markets have all been hurt, whether we look at the currencies, whether we look at the markets themselves, the stock markets, and so on. You can see that these countries have relied on everything running smoothly. But of course, that doesn't happen. And it is a matter of fact that things have really changed here throughout 2018. It has been very different in 2018 rather than, let's say, post-financial crisis. Everything has really fallen apart. And that is definitely present right now in emerging markets. Stock markets in both Turkey and Argentina have seen losses of more than 50% this year as their central banks have had to boost interest rates dramatically to try and stem capital flight from their borders. We saw Argentina bringing up interest rates to 40% and it was seen as something so crazy. And then it didn't take long for everything to continue to go on. We saw the weakness that was persisting there for quite some time and the money was leaving. And what did they do? bring interest rates up to 60%, and it didn't solve anything. The IMF came in with a bailout of $50 billion, the biggest IMF bailout ever, and what? It continued. You cannot stop it by using central banks to get in their monetary injections and be able to fulfill all these promises that they've made. It's impossible, and yet we still do so every single day. Now, this is a problem that we've had, not just with Brazil and Argentina and Turkey and so on. This has been going on for quite some time. I'm showing you this right here. It's just a couple examples, and it's just because it's currently oh, uh, you know, happening, and that is with these particular nations. But we're going to see it in the future. We've seen it in the past. And I want you to know that central banks have the inability to fix anything. They'll never fix anything, and it's just a matter of fact. Looking at this, returns on selected countries' ETFs rank by year-to-date return the country on the left-hand side, right-hand side, the very right-hand side, we're looking at the year-to-date. And this has been, you know, based on their ETFs, it has been dismal performance, you know, and whether we're looking at Russia at the top of the list, and we can scroll down just to give you an example of a few of these, even the UK has been doing poorly here year-to-date and Italy not looking so good. But remember, we're looking at it on a shorter term. We're looking at it on a longer term as well. Just basically ever since the VIX really fell apart, the whole trade there, the speculators, ever since then, nothing has really made sense. And you can just basically scroll through if you're interested in seeing other countries and unfortunately how much they've suffered. Look at Turkey, for example, down 49%. I mean, it's significant no matter how you look at it. Largest 10, the largest uh, top 10 of the largest EM, that's emerging markets, current account deficits. Remember, this is priced in US dollar, all right? Now, looking at India, they have 66 billion. Very significant numbers here. We're seeing Turkey, we're seeing Brazil, Argentina, 
all the usual players are at the top of the list. And this is a very big problem, not just when it's priced in US dollar, but also when it's coming from inside. And we have a big problem whenever we look at any type of deficit or debt. I basically pool them all together, although some people like to factor in if it's coming from outside or inside, you know, it's a different story. If we, quote, owe it to ourselves, then it's not a problem. But if we owe another country, then it is a problem. But really, if a country really wanted to, they could just print all the money and give them confetti. But that's not really what happens all the time. All of these countries now today have been printing money in order to you know, chase each other spiraling down into this devaluation that seems to be persistent everywhere globally. Looking at this, you can see emerging market bargain hunters were out in force on Thursday, snapping up beaten currencies from South Africa to Russia and driving the main global emerging market stocks index to a three week high. So this is the analyst coming in and saying, now is the time, now is the time you got to get in, you got to buy these. And whether or not they're actually making a wise decision, we're going to see in the coming weeks and in the coming months. But this is what's been happening. And then all of these investors are coming in, rushing in, buying them up. Why? Because they're cheap. If they're not able to get the return that they desire in, let's say, U.S. treasuries, for example, well, they're going to go to emerging markets and they're going to get much, much higher returns. Think about it right now. It's somewhere like Argentina, somewhere like Brazil even, or any of these other countries that have been suffering right now. Well, their yields are going to be pretty, pretty good. That's for sure. The question is, will they remain solvent? Emerging market returns year to date. On the left-hand side, that's the S&P 500 in green. And comparing that to the emerging markets, whether we're looking at Turkey, Argentina, China, South Africa, and Brazil, we are seeing anywhere between 20 plus percent all the way up past 50 percent into the negatives. These countries are not doing well. I mean, even if they do come a 5, 10 percent, we're still looking at significant drops. And that's for the currency. That's for the markets as well. U.S. Treasury financing needs. This here in billions of dollars. I'm just showing you, you know, going through the years, how significant their deficits will be, their needs will be. Then scroll down. Looking at the nominal GDP of a country like Mexico or Indonesia, it's the same amount. It's bigger than the nominal GDP of a country like Argentina or Turkey. It's so huge, and they're never going to be able to pay it all back. It is quite significant to see what they're doing. And I don't know how they're going to get out of it other than hyperinflating the currency. This right here is showing us the QE. Globally, we're seeing this. The Fed, the BOJ, the BOE, the ECB, the SMB, and China's People's Bank of China looking at all of the central banks around the world printing money. But guess what? The Fed is not the only one who is slowing down. We are witnessing the major central banks around the world starting to, taking way too long, starting to slow down on this money printing. And you can look through here and see the fact that they are suggesting through 2019, if you could see that on here, 2019 is when they're going to start to actually go into the negative territory for this. And I think it's going to be very, very difficult for especially the ECB to stop printing money. I really don't know about that. We're not in anywhere near negative terms here. We only have a few months left. So we'll see if they actually go ahead with their plans. They make a lot of claims, but not a lot of action. That goes for the ECB, that goes for the Federal Reserve, and so on. We've been seeing that the Federal Reserve has been talking about increasing interest rates from pretty much from, you know, 2009, they started, okay, we're going to bring them down, don't worry about it. And ever since they hit zero, we said, no, 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 don't worry. We're going to bring it up, just a matter of time, hang in there. It wasn't until December 2015, if my memory serves correctly, that they brought it up a quarter of a percent. I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke. So we're going to see what happens. All of these markets have been running on quantitative easing. How they're ever going to implement the policy of quantitative tightening without collapsing the markets, I don't know. So we'll see about that. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you help to support the channel. It's pretty easy. Just hit that button. A lot of people tell me that they hit the button, they go away, come back later and realize that button's not hit. Those unfortunate but if you could try that help me out and also hit the subscribe button you're joining 140 
plus thousand people from all over the world. So many good people on here and I learned so much from the comments. The comment section of this YouTube channel is incredible. People share so much intel coming from their cities, their countries around the world and sharing what they are experiencing. So you get to hear it from the ground, not through the propaganda. You're going to actually hear from the source. So that's always good and I want to thank all of you for doing that. So definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm going to end it there. Take care.